Hello subscribers, it's me, Bevzir from SlideNerd. This week, Facebook released a new SDK for iOS and Android. In this video, I'm going to show you how to log in to Facebook from your Android app with the new V4.0 SDK. If you go to my channel, SlideNerd, under playlist, this video is going to be placed under Android working with APIs. So let's go back and get started with Facebook SDK. There are two major steps involved in making this thing work. For the first step, we are going to create an app on Facebook Developers Console. Go to developers.facebook.com. From there, go to Android. From there, jump to Facebook SDK for Android, where it says download the SDK. You won't have to do this anymore if you are using Android Studio. So let's go to this part which says get started. Here, we have a quick start guide for Android, which I'm going to click and skip and create a new app ID. I'm going to call this login sample and I'm going to select the category as education and say create app ID. It's going to ask me captcha. Let me enter that. I have my app created on Facebook's developer console, which is called login sample. It has this app ID, which I'm going to need from my Android studio project. Other than that, if you go to settings right now, it says app ID is this secret key is that, but there is an option here that says add platform. Since we are making this for Android, let's click that and select Android here. And then it's going to ask us the package name, the main class name, and the key hash to identify our app with Facebook database. So let's go back to Android Studio and create a new project to support all this. Once we click Save Changes here, we are good to go. So we go back to Android Studio and we say Start a new Android project. I'm going to call this FB Login Sample. And the package name is login Sample. I'm going to click next here, select phone and tablet, minimum API version, ice cream sandwich, click next. I'm going to select the template blank activity with fragment, hit next, name it as it is, click finish, and my new Android project is going to be created. In the meantime, I'm going to add some information back in our console. In the Google Play package name, I want to specify the package name of our app, which happens to be webs.slidenerd.fb login sample. The next thing is the name of the main activity you want Facebook to launch. In our case, that is going to be main activity itself. Once you have added these two pieces of information, click save changes at the bottom. And the next piece of information is the key hash. This is going to identify your app to the Facebook database servers out there. So let's go back to Facebook developers and go to the Android section where we are going to take a look at Facebook SDK for Android. Now certain things have to be set up in our app which is why I'm coming back here to get started guide. So here we are going to have to add our Facebook API or SDK to Android Studio. First, we are going to take the repositories part of this, go to the Gradle scripts, build.gradle and add a repository to indicate that we are going to download the Facebook SDK from over here. So we are going to add this dependency for SDK version 4.0 back in our Gradle build file. Once we do that, we can sync our project this simply tells Android Studio that my project requires Facebook SDK of Android version 4.0. So give it to me. So at this point, your Android Studio is going to attempt to download this SDK and let it use that SDK and its classes in your classes. So if everything is good, at this point, you say Gradle build finished without any errors. So let's go back and add some more configuration information. In our case, we have to first initialize the SDK. We can do that inside our main fragment over here. It's called main activity fragment currently. Press shift F6 and rename that. And we go there inside our on create view method where we are going to add the Facebook SDK dot initialize import class. And to get the application context, we can simply say get activity dot get application context. Now we need to configure our manifest file to support Facebook. First of all, we need the internet permission that we are going to go back and add inside manifest in the Android manifest file. Second thing that we are going to need is the app ID with which you want to connect. Now, if you remember, our login sample already has a nice app ID at the top. And we want to specify this app ID back inside our strings.xml. So we go to RES values strings.xml and we add this over here by saying string name is app underscore ID and we assign that value. Now we need to add this metadata inside our manifest file to indicate that this app 
is going to connect with that app in the back end. So once you add the internet permission, we are going to take this metadata and add it again under application over here. Now make sure it is the string slash app ID which we just entered over here. So everything looks good right now, but we need to get a hash key. There are two ways of generating the hash key. Either download SSL, set a path for it, and use this command which is key tool exports it blah 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 to generate your hash key. That is the long way of doing it. There's a shortcut if you go down below in the same link, you will notice that they have given some piece of code here which you can copy paste and print the hash key out. The hash key is needed because even if someone gets your app, decompiles it, gets its app ID and try to tamper it in some way, the hash key can prevent that from happening because it's going to remain truly unique to you and your application. So let's create an application class. This class is going to extend from Android application and it will have an onCreate method. And other than that, it will have this method called print hash key. Inside this method, I will add code for the hash key generation. Make sure that you import everything. And the only tricky import out there is signature, which you ensure that you have the android.content.pm.signature instead of the other one. So in the package info, you have to go here and specify your package to generate the hash. Once you do this, go back to your manifest file where you're going to specify that you're using a custom application class by saying name here and saying dot my application out there. So in the on create of this method, we are going to say print hash key and we are going to specify the tag as lives in my case so that you can see the hash key in the log cat and copy it from there. Let's run the app and find out what happens. So when you run the app, the hash key will be seen in the log cat below, which will be a huge string with an equal to sign at the end. Now, unfortunately, I cannot share that with you because that's supposed to be private information. So you go back to login sample under the key hashes section, just paste it, press enter and click save changes. So at this point, our app is configured to use the particular hash key that we had. So all we need to do is add the login button and get to the login process. So coming back to the page, getting started Android SDK, we are going to need an activity that is going to help us perform the login. That would be this activity which is com.facebook.facebook activity. We are going to copy that and go back to our manifest file and add this as another activity in our app. So control alt L to reformat stuff. So this would be the actual guide for Facebook login which says Facebook login for Android where we are going to use the login button class which is basically a custom button that lets you log in and log out of Facebook. So we are going to have to follow these steps which we already did. We are going to go down now and add our Facebook login button in XML inside our main fragment. The way you do that is simply copy paste this code for the login button. You take your active fragment underscore main here. Instead of the text view, you are going to go down and paste this login button out there. The relative layout is out there and we are going to make sure the login button is centered. So all I have now in my fragment underscore main dot XML is a relative layout. A text view where I'm going to display some welcome message which has an ID text details and there's the login button which is right at the center of the parent horizontally and vertically with this ID login underscore button so going back to code the first step would be to find and initialize that login button I'm going to do that inside the on view created over here so with this one line of code I have initialized the login button from XML the next step is to configure this button, support permissions and perform the actual process of login. If you go to the documentation of login button on Facebook, the first method that we are going to work with is called set read permissions. Now Facebook has the concept of permissions as you all know. There are certain permissions that you are granted by default like public profile and certain permissions that you have to ask from the user. We are going to set a permission on this, it says set read permissions here and that takes two forms. Either you can su supply a list here of strings or you can supply a where args string array over here. I'm going to simply ask the permission here for accessing the user sprints. Now remember, if you don't need the permission, then don't ask it. I'm doing this just that you guys understand how to actually request permissions in your app when you're working with it. Now since you're working inside a fragment, you'll also do login button dot set fragment and pass a reference to your current fragment over here. Now to manage your Facebook login properly, you're going to need an object called callback manager. If you go to the documentation for that object, 
It says the callback manager manages the callbacks into the SDK from an activity or fragments on activity result. It says the method should be called from the activities or fragments on activity result. So we are going to first construct an object of this callback manager. Next, we initialize it inside the on create by saying m callback manager is callback manager dot factory dot create. Now notice that it uses the factory pattern for creating things. Next, we add an on activity result inside our fragment. We are going, we are, we are going to say m callback manager dot on activity result and pass the parameters. The login is going to be handled by the Facebook SDK for you. But once the login has happened, whether it was successful, whether it was cancelled, whether there was some error, this needs to be told to us. And that is contained inside this Facebook callback class out there. We are going to construct an object of this. And this is a generic class. It's going to take a login result argument out there. And we are going to call this m callback over here. And of course, we need to import this login result, say import class out there, and new Facebook callback. Now, notice that it has three methods on success, on cancel, and on error. And don't forget to put a semicolon at the end of that. If you go to the documentation and take a look at login result, it says this class shows the results of a login operation. So you can go down and take a look at how you can access the token, how you can get the permissions that were granted, the permissions that were denied, and so on. So the last step would be to actually go inside our on view created method and say login button dot register callback. The callback manager is going to handle everything, right? So we're going to pass a reference to that. And all the results of the operation of login should come inside this m callback out here. So inside the on success, you can get a reference to the access token, which will contain the current token that you've been granted to connect with Facebook servers. Other than that, there is this class called profile that lets you access the profile of the person who just logged inside. Now, beware that this may be now if something goes wrong, but you have to check for now. What I'm going to do is I have a text view here called M text details. I'm going to put my name giving a welcome message in this on success method. So there it is. If profile is not now, then I'll simply say welcome and profile dot get name. If you take a look at the documentation for the profile class, it has all sorts of methods that you'd be interested in, like get current profile, you can set current profile, you can get the profile picture URI where you can specify the width and height of the image. Earlier, you used to write a lot of code for doing all this, but you don't need to do that anymore. There's first name, middle name, last name, link URL, describe contents and stuff like that. And notice that it also implements parsable, which means you can pass this profile class to another class or you can save it and restore it inside your own save instance state method out there. So for the first case, I have my real device running here, which happens to be a shitty Micromax A74 phone, which is highly outdated. It has the Facebook app installed, as you can notice, and there's my FB login sample. Once I click on that, the app starts and it gives me this button, which is login with Facebook. When I click on the button, there is a progress bar that's going to spin up on the screen. And then you notice welcome blah 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 BAM that worked and that's how Facebook login is right it's not that complex anymore if I if I go and click log out over here it's going to give a dialogue saying logged in as blah 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 do you want to log out so just click log out and you're back to the screen once again now let's try something shall we right now if I try to rotate the screen the Facebook login welcome message disappears and this is because I haven't tried to access the profile from the on resume method and I'm gonna do that right now so going back once you rotate once again you don't see the welcome text anymore so let's go back to our app in the on resume method and try to do something so here I have on resume inside this I'm going to try to get the current profile of the user by saying I'm going to try doing the same thing which is profile not equals to now then display the message so let me put this code inside some method which I can probably call as display welcome message. So there you go, there's my method, which takes a profile, checks if it's not now, and then displays a welcome message. I'm gonna call this method inside on resume and there when our on success actually works. So inside the on success, I'll simply say display welcome message, pass the profile object there, and inside the on resume as well, I'm going to do the same thing by getting the profile and say display welcome message and passing that profile inside. So now if I run the app, I should be able to see it in both places. So there's my app once again, I click login with Facebook, the spinner is going to rotate and it says welcome, blah, 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 let me rotate the screen. There you go, it stays. You notice, if you go back, you rotate the screen again, you press the back button, you go back into the app, it's still there. And that definitely means that our on resume trick really worked. 
Now, there are two little things that I'd like to talk about before I conclude this video. Let's get to that. There are two things in the whole app which are not fixed. One, the access token. You connect with the internet, maybe your internet goes out, maybe the access token expires or something is reset. You're, you lose your access token and get a new one. And at the same time, the user is also something that keeps changing. You may go and change your profile picture or your first name or last name, and that is again going to change everything upside down. Now you want to make sure that you track or handle these two changes in your app. So you can do that easily in SDK version 4.0 with the access token tracker and your profile tracker classes are there. So I'm going to first make an access token tracker here inside the on create by simply saying access token tracker tracker is new access token tracker and whenever the access token changes this on current access token changed method is going to be called where the left one is basically the old one and the right one is basically the new one of course i'll have to call it new token here because the new word is not going to be there the same way you can track the user profile changes as well with something called profile tracker inside your own create we can construct that by saying profile tracker is new profile tracker again same thing happens here whenever the profile of the user changes you have two parameters that are supplied to you the one on the left which will be the old profile and the one on the right which is going to be the new profile now creating this callback is not enough since this is an active process where you're going to continuously monitor something on the back end you want to make sure that you start and stop the tracking at appropriate times inside the on create i'm going to say access token tracker dot start tracking and inside the on resume or something on is on stop or on destroy or something i want to stop tracking so i'm going to say profile tracker dot start tracking now of course we need to make this as instance variables or fields out there so there you go i made them as instance variables and i started the tracking inside on create over here and i stopped the tracking inside the on stop method over here so now i run this on an emulator that does not have facebook api installed so let's go to the login with facebook and this is going to pop up this web view dialog where it's going to ask me the credentials let me enter them so after entering the username and password once i hit login it's going to ask me saying you're authorized this app i'll click ok and there is our stuff now you notice it's not showing me any welcome message and that's probably because the profile is null and this seems to be a bug or something if i go back to the on current profile changed here if i see the same thing that is display the welcome message and i put my new profile here in that case it seems to work if i go back to my emulator now it seems to say welcome blah 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 if i rotate the screen that still works so there's some some kind of issue running this on a real device versus an emulator i would like to know your thoughts about it the code for everything is available on github.com slash slider if you go to repositories it's right under facebook v4.0 hello world if you like what you saw please like this video share this video subscribe to slider and let us know your thoughts in the comment boxes below thanks for watching we'll catch you guys in the next video have a nice day